All right, YouTube, here's everything you need to know about these off-grid hydroponic growers made out of downspouts. All right, so if you already know about these or you've already made some and you're already growing in it, then you probably don't need to watch this video. But if you're one of the new people who's been around, I think this channel, uh, last 28 days, we've had about 300 plus thousand new unique viewers on this channel and I think in March it was something around like 400,000 over 400,000 so we've had over 700,000 new people like actually see this channel so there's been a lot of questions and if you've been around and you know about this maybe you could help answer some of those questions help some people out but I'm gonna go ahead and tell you everything I know about this in a quick little video and we've got some other instructional videos, how to build it. I'll go over that really quick in this too, but we're going to talk about why I started using these, you know, why you should use them, uh, how they become a, an integral part of our continuous harvest system, and uh, where you can get them if you don't want to build them yourself. There's a couple of people that make them, but uh, I'll also give you alternatives uh, if you can't get these or you can't make them what else you can use too. So if you want to be growing hydroponically and grow some of your own food, this is an excellent part of the system, but you don't need it. You can do it in other ways and use other containers. We're gonna show you different things that you can use, but this has served me well. The reason why I started using these in the first place was we were using the cracky method. I was on the road all the time and I was trying to grow my own garden. I kept coming home and, and, and the garden would be dead. The irrigation would go off or, or something would happen. And this went on year after year after year. You know, you get out, you till, compost, do all that work, all that hard, hard work and, and, and something always happened. And I still wanted to grow my own food. So I looked through all different types of systems. There was biointensive farming. There was um, the gutter gardens. There was uh, Dr. Cracky and the Cracky system. I looked into hydroponics and I really got into that at first. I was like, okay, that's cool. I can set up some pumps, have water going around, and actually set up a little NFT downpipe system made out of these four inch sewer pipes. And that was my first experiment. And the same thing happened. It was going good. You know, it was fun. And all of a sudden, you're growing something, and I was on the road. But then once in a while, I was on the road, and, and something would tri trip a breaker, or and the pump would go out, and I'd come up back home, and everything would be dead again. So I kept trying to find things and, and the cracky system is basically growing in a nutrient solution and it's where you fill up your nutrients, you put your nutrients that the plant needs and you go ahead and fill it up, you put your plant in there and I've got videos, I'll link it up above on the basics of how to do the cracky system. But basically it's hydroponics with no pumps. So you have no soil, there's no weeding, no tilling, all that blood, sweat and tears that goes into a traditional garden. You just put your nutrient solution into a container and you put your plants in there and basically it grows on its own. So we had containers actually like milk jugs and stuff all over our porch because that's what the, the basic uh, cracky system said. You take one gallon, this is three quarts, but you would take a gallon container and you put a head of lettuce in there and you could grow the head of lettuce on that gallon of water and you wouldn't have to re place it, refill it, or do anything. So that was awesome thinking you could grow a head of lettuce with one gallon of water. Imagine what your garden uses in, in just one hour watering your garden and you could grow things uh, with just one gallon, you could grow a head of lettuce. So I had these all over my porch. There was all kind of containers and some of you are still doing it. I do it, I, I find it hard to throw something away because I'm thinking I might need it, right? and I've got these now going all the way up the wall like vertical gardening so you definitely can do something like this um, but this this is the basic cracking method and this is what we started with and and after a while we we had these were growing plants and then we would use them over and over so we'd harvest and then we'd have to clean these out and then and I was cleaning out like 40 50 60 you know containers and doing it over and over and we thought there's got to be a better way and we thought back to the initial hydroponics when we started with the sewer pipes and we had it set up. And we had a bunch of plants and they were all growing. We had lettuce and chard and, and pak choy and stuff growing all over the place and, and basil and mint.
and it was all in these pipes and then when we were done we just kind of cleaned out the whole thing all at once right so we were thinking how can we adapt that to the cracky method so we took it apart and this is how we actually started was with this so if you can't find downspouts a lot of people have told me I can't find that three by four downspout where we live we started with these and this actually makes it easier because we're going to go over the end caps and that how to cap these off so that it can hold liquid. And these are easy because that's what it was meant to do, right? And they actually have end caps. So for a couple of bucks, you can buy an end cap and silicon it onto both ends, drill some holes in it, and you've got your cracky planter. And that's what we started with. And you'll see these on our ports. And this was awesome. We could take some space and we could grow several plants at one time and leave it for weeks at a time and grow lettuce kale, spinach, you know, all kinds of leafy greens and that. So this was cool. The only problem with this was we put it down, you had to kind of get it set just right and you had to strap it down because it would roll around, right? So we had a bunch of these rolling all around and and having to strap them down and, and, and keep them level. Uh, wasn't that much of a problem, but it, it was just something you had to do. So you guys can always start with something like this like I said just cap off the ends drill you some holes and you've got you an awesome container now where we were living a uh, beautiful place it was on a pond we were farm hands and it had a handrail had a huge porch it was about uh, 30 something feet long by about 12 and what we would do is it had a handrail all the way across it was just a, a two by four you know sitting flat and of course that won't sit on it right but we had all this space on the porch and we were out where there was wildlife all the time and there was you know wild turkey running around deer rabbits armadillos you know all that stuff was everywhere and we could plant we had the room we had we were living on 300 acre um, place we had room we could plant a garden but we were just constantly dealing with wildlife so we put the stuff on our porch where they were kind of afraid to come up, you know, except for the occasional raccoon and stuff, right? And we had all of this handrail. And we thought it'd be nice, you know, to put planters up there. And we started with small containers, you know, like this, little flat, like shoe boxes. I'll show you a picture of that. And we stacked those on. So we had all these little containers, different sizes all over the place. And we got in the same thing where we were having to clean a bunch of different containers and and if you want to grow a bunch of different crops that works too so you can always do that but we we're looking into growing like a bunch of like the same crop because we started eating a lot of smoothies and salads and things and we thought well it'd be great if we had like you know as much basil as we ever needed we didn't have to go to the store for basil and if we had kale instead of going and buying kale that was they didn't have baby kale back then right if you guys think back about five six seven years ago they were just selling reg regular kale and we were growing baby kale we didn't even call it that we just knew that when it was small and immature it was tender you could eat it raw you put it in your smoothies and that but the, the big kale was kind of fibrous and you had to cook it so we we're thinking wow we'll just grow our own and we want to grow a lot so we were looking we saw these downspouts right this is just the one that goes down the side of your house and we figured well if we could cap off the end somehow we have a cracky container just like that and it's flat they sat right on top of the 2x4 so we had the handrails and in, in this 30 foot long handrail I think they were like 8 to 9 feet in between of them and we'd have one, two, three of them set up one on the side so we had our whole handrail there was nothing but like either pak choy or kale or whatever we were growing at the time was all over the place not to mention everything that was down around on the ground. So it took us vertical where, where we didn't have room before. All of a sudden we were growing like loads of food. So that's why we use the downspouts and that's why it can help you all. And we moved uh, about five years ago to where we're at right now. And we don't have a porch and we didn't have a handrail. But I didn't want to throw these away because I had a bunch of them, right? So what we did was I, I want to go vertical because we have a small space. We went from 300 acres down to... A house that's less than a thousand square feet and a tiny tiny yard so what we did was we've got a couple of walls where we get good morning Sun little afternoon shade and we thought if we could grow up there how could we stack these up and we built a little ladder system I just want to do something simple so everyone out there could do it I don't want to make it you know some kind of 
feat of engineering and that where it's like really difficult and I do something just for a bunch of views. I want people to actually take this and implement it and to use it because I want everybody growing, right? So we just thought two by fours. Everybody can go get a couple pieces of two by fours and we just screwed them together, put it up the wall and then all of a sudden we had somewhere where we could take these and instead of being on a handrail, all of a sudden now we could stack these like five or six high depending on how high you could go, right? How high you want to reach. Um, so we've got those ladders set up against the wall. We grow all kind of leafy greens and that up the wall um, if we need to move it because this is one thing too that people don't think about. You know, they, they want to plant a garden, they look out in their yard and they go, that looks like a cool spot for a garden. But you got to figure out how much sunlight you get or when it gets the most sun. You know, if you live in some place that's really hot, you might just want the morning sun and you might want a little bit of afternoon shade in that. If you're living where it's, it stays cool in that, you might want as much sun as you can get, right? So you have to look around in your yard. And the sun, the pattern of the sun changes throughout the year. And I want to grow all the time. So if you guys have a short growing season where it, you only have a few months where you grow and you know exactly where the sun goes, you know the spot to pick. Now me, I can grow almost all year long. But the sun's pattern that goes across my yard, I know that during the winter it's down low and it's where you know the shade goes and I know where the sun goes during the night. And during the summer, it's up a little higher and it goes across my yard. And all of a sudden those spots aren't real good during the summer because they're full sun and we and we get up close to 100 degrees and it's just sun all day and it just bakes the plants so I know that I have to move it to a certain spot. Now with this ladder system I've got all this uh, plants growing up the wall if I can find a couple different spots in my house and that's why you see some of my pictures are are in different spots it's because I move it and that's cool because we can take all of these down clean them out harvest you know rinse out your containers and then that ladder system you can just pick it up it's light it's just a couple two by fours move it to wherever you need it and replant so that's cool it's not like we just made something like you plant your garden and it's stuck there and if i ever put it up and i made a mistake and i'm like this is getting way too much sun you know we're screwed or whatever i can actually take these and take them off set them to the side move it set them back up it, it's mobile it can move so these things are are awesome the portable and that's the reason why I use them we'll go through a quick little tutorial on how to make them um, one other thing let's see we'll talk about the the size of the hole there and why I use that I started out with net cups net pots and you guys if you ever looked into hydroponics you probably saw that right so I thought that's how you had to grow and put either rock wool or clay pebbles in there. And that's how I actually started using that. And then I was like, I don't want to have to keep buying these. I don't want to have to keep buying rock wool. I don't want to have to keep cleaning out my my pellets and everything. You know, there was, there was a whole lot of work that goes into hydroponics. And I want to make it easy because we were growing food and I was excited about it. But there was still a lot of work that was involved. And... I'm kind of a lazy gardener. I don't want to spend all my time out there. I want to go out and fiddle with my plants a little bit, but I don't want it to be a full-time job. So we were trying to figure out other things, and, and one thing we did was we started with the net cups, and I started experimenting with Dixie cups. They look about the size of a Dixie cup, right? And I would sit there and cut the bottoms off the Dixie cup, and you guys probably saw some people who get them or the little K cups with a solder iron do the slits. I didn't have patience for all that. I turned on the TV when I was watching TV. I took a, a stack of Dixie cups and my little knife with my razor blade and I cut the bottoms off. I'd just be sitting and watch TV, cut the bottoms off, and I'd go through like in like 10 minutes, you know, a pack of 50 of them. So I'd cut them off and I'd be all set. You know, I didn't, I didn't want to sit there and, you know, do all of that. If you've got time to do that, that's just fine. But I found out that the three ounce Dixie cup fit in a two ounce net cup. So I said, cool, we'll experiment with that because. I was actually getting the Dixie Cups from the dollar store. So a buck for 50 of them was like an awesome deal. And we started using Dixie Cups and, and craft foam. And the reason why I left them at two inches and I found out that the Dixie Cups fit that too, that we'll use that, was because if the Dixie Cups messed up or, or didn't work, because it was just an experiment, that I didn't waste my downspouts, which was the expensive part, right? I didn't waste that and I could always go back to the net cup. 
So that's why mine are two inches. No other reason. There's no magic thing like the, the right size for the plan and what size do I need and this and that. You don't have to stress out about that. We moved on to the pool noodle. And the, the smaller pool noodles fit in here with a little finagling. Um, you know, cutting out a little wedge. Just like that. And they fit in there perfect. So you can use a two inch one, but if you can't find a hole saw, which is what we use, a two inch hole saw, and this thing has made thousands of these. We used to sell these. Um, we sold thousands of these. There's a bunch of you out there growing. Um, that fits right in there, right? So we just used a hole saw. Now, this one fits it. If you can't find these, these are a little expensive, like 20 or 30 bucks. Or if you get a kit, you know, they, they, they range in price. You can always go with a smaller hole because this you can cut down even smaller, right? You can cut it down to all the way down to like one inch. And I've used a paddle bit or when we grow in these, I used to cut the top off here and use a pool noodle. Some of my early videos. Now I don't even bother with that. I just open that up. I just cut a little piece of pool noodle just to fit right in the top there. So that makes it easy. So don't stress out about you know the exact size like people you know words you know oh I can't find that size I can't do it I was using actually a one and seven eighth bit because some of the two inch ones some of the net cups I I got would fall through a two inch hole if I messed around or the plant got a little heavy so I made it just a, sm a little bit smaller but that's just through experimentation and things that I went through um, you don't have stress about it if you want to go ahead and, and start out with like a pool noodle if you're not gonna mess with net cups then you can make this any size you want. Um, I've even got like the three inch ones. If you move up bigger like that and you get the larger pull noodle, you might want to get a three inch neck cup because then you're getting a little bit bigger with the pull noodle and the plant, this doesn't have a whole lot of like stability going that way, right? So if this gets too big, you know, I've planted them in there, but if you're growing like bigger plants, uh, if you go up to the three inch, you might want to go ahead, if you're drilling a three inch hole, I would go ahead and actually get the three inch net cups and they fit down in there and that works just fine. All right, so to put this together, it was on my handrail and my first thought was, you know, these, they're two inch holes. I'll space them four inches apart. That gives me two inches in between. And that was the first thing that I did. And I built this, it worked great that's what I went with the whole time so that's not a magic formula either that's what I've done since the beginning of my videos back in 2017 when I started posting videos and sharing what I was doing and if it's not broke don't fix it right so if you want to you don't even have to do these exactly apart you can you know get in here and just drill a hole drill a hole drill a hole do you know have that have fun the, the thing is you have fun you don't stress out about things like like what's the exact measurement of this and and how far is this from the end and and if you guys look at my downspouts out on the table you're gonna see there's a lot of different lengths and some are just a couple inches smaller some are you know six inches smaller there, there's different lengths there's different end caps this is because I experimented a lot and when I was selling them to all of you what I would do is if I went to make one sometimes once in a while you know when you're chopping especially during the cold weather during the warm weather this is nice and soft during the, the cold weather it was brittle and sometimes it would chip on the end a little bit it was still fine you could still use it in that but i didn't want to sell it to someone so on the occasion that one would chip i would take it and cut it smaller shave off that piece and so now this one would be three quarters of an inch smaller than the other one and i didn't want to sell, you know send people uh packs they had some one size and some a little smaller and bigger. I wanted them all uniform just to look professional. So I didn't want to waste them. So all the stuff that you see out in my garden is all the mistakes I've made over the years that I don't like throwing things away. I don't like wasting things. So anything that was a mistake gets hodgepodge together. And that's why I know that it'd be better to make some videos and just have uniform like all the same thing, you know, looking really pretty and making a big pretty picture. But that's not what I'm about. I'm about not throwing things away, recycling, using what you have. And that's what I have. I made a business out of selling these and I didn't want to waste any of it. Um, that would just bother me throwing it in the trash when I know that I could actually make something out of it. So mine are all different shapes, different sizes. There's different ways to seal up the ends. 
So basically, let's go through a, a quick tutorial. And I've got a playlist that shows exactly how to make these. But um, if, you, if you don't want to watch that, you might be able to figure it out yourself. But basically, all I did was take this, two inch holes, four inches on center, so they're two inches apart, so I'd, I'd make marks every four inches. Then I drill a pilot hole, then I come through with the hole saw and drill a hole. So that's that. And like I said, you don't have to stress out about that too much. Now the ends, what I did at first, I was like, how do I close up the ends? Now they've got, they don't have caps like they did for this, right? They've got elbows because this is coming down to carry water down your house and away from your house. So nobody would ever cap it up. Why would you have a downspout with water coming down and have it capped up, right? So they don't make caps for it. So what would happen is it comes down and they've got an elbow. And I made a couple where it put an elbow on and then it put the opening up here. And then you could fill your water in from there. You could check the nutrients from there. And then I just cover it with aluminum foil. And I've seen some of you out there put like styrofoam in there. Um, put different things on with rubber bands and, and just any way you can cover it actually works So I've been using that one and that one's out there um, Growing with everything else and that's why everything else looks flat has an end cap and then there's one that's like turned up right and that's just because that's one that I experimented with Now you can do that But I didn't want to sell that to people and just look like you know the end of a drain pipe so I got out my heat gun that I had for years, you know, it wasn't like, you know, went out and bought a heat gun and was trying to do something different. So old Craftsman, you know, this thing's probably 30 years old. And this thing has made thousands of these, you know, all those that we sold over the past couple of years. This one little heat gun made thousands. So this is a Craftsman ha uh, heat gun. And, and it went through a bunch of them. But all we did was heat up the end a little bit, flip it upside down, heat up the end a little bit and then just fold that in. Now I've got that in the video. So all we did was fold up the end like a little envelope, didn't seal it or anything, and then that went ahead and was you were able to hold the water in there. And that's how I started it, and, and I've done that for years, so that still works. So if you can't find these end caps, go look at my video. It shows how to heat it up and how to bend the ends. I, I did it like that for years. It works just fine. Now, if you buy the heat gun, some people don't want to buy the heat gun, and not use it for anything else. So I went ahead and made, made some end caps and actually our friend over at worldgraceproject.org and you go check her out. I'll put a link down in the description below. She actually made some end caps and I was still heating and bending them. And she said, do you think people would be interested in it? And I said, yeah, yeah. And she said that her project, the World Grace Project, helps um, immigrants and and it goes towards a good cause so if you go check her out see what her project's about you know it's an awesome little thing that helps a lot of people and they made end caps and this was during lockdown so i made a video people got excited we got a bunch of orders and then we had like a plastic shortage or pvc or whatever and she couldn't get any so i started looking around for what i could get down here and you know we couldn't afford to like just ship loads of plastic up and down right uh, PVC so I actually got a CNC machine which is just a little router you put a little um, program into it and what she was using was actually a huge tabletop one where you can cut a bunch at one time I got a little tiny one that I cut one at one one at a time so that uh, I could get materials that I could find down here and make some and, and she could make some she had them on back order So we had, we had, had a little tough time in that like first month So I started doing it was just because orders kept coming in and I didn't want to tell people no You know, we just got people excited about growing right and I didn't want to all of a sudden just say sorry You can't grow, you know, we, we don't have anything so I got a little CMC machine. I figured if I just work all day or, or through the night, I'll just make one at a time. You know, we were selling four in a pack, right? Make one at a time, and it's got this little machine going around and around and around, you know, minutes, you know, for each one. And I did that for a, a few months and, and sold quite a bit of them, you know, the, the downspouts with those in it. When I found a little thicker material, I like this one sets up it looks kind of like a garden box and that's just what I used but since then I quit doing it like I said I did that to kind of fill in that gap to help people out 
and Karen, uh, things, you know, got better and we got supplies in and then she's making the end caps. They're not like this. I have like little resin end caps that I used to make too. That was just to give people another option and show people who know how to work with resin, how to do this. She's got the little thinner end caps like you see out there. I've got some of those out on the table. Those work just fine. Uh, she still has those for sale. So you can go over there and find some. There's some people on the Etsy selling these thicker ones. Um, you just have to look around for it. Like I said, I, I really don't have time to do it. It's, uh, it. When when I do this and I do a video, I get so many orders that I spend all my time processing and making things. I'm, I'm just constantly doing that and packing and shipping and my neighbors this was going on all through the night you know we had to get through these uh, you know those initial orders um, I was running the CNC machine which is not a quiet machine is you know just it, it's loud and I'm in my garage and my whole neighbor all I heard for months every day was chopping with the chop saw zzz, 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 drilling holes sanding uh, the CNC machine going all night trying to keep up so uh, my neighbors, I want to say thank you to all of them. They all put up with me, but it helped us get through lockdown. We sold a lot of them and it, it just helped my family survive. So um, I just can't keep producing them. Uh, it, it's just not feasible. You know that I would spend all my time doing that and I wouldn't be able to grow anything else. I was like uh, not making, you know, videos and that anymore because I, I couldn't get out to my garden because every day I got up, I knew I had to get on, on the chops on the drill or go find supplies my god just to try and find everything um, I had to go around to you know to keep costs down I couldn't afford shipping that would just blow our cost out of the water so I had to drive to every like Lowe's within there's one two three four five of them within about ten miles of me you know this one had a couple downspouts this one had a couple this one had a couple the the PVC material on the end this one had some and I was just constantly running around making things and, and I just can't do that. So everyone who keeps asking me, you know, where do you get those? You know, want to buy them? Um, I'm sorry, I, I just can't make them anymore. Maybe sometime like during the summer when things really heat up and nobody really feels like growing. If I get some time and, and there's materials around, maybe I'll just make some and put them up and, and I can sell a couple to some people to help someone out. But um, there's other people out there that are doing it. Lots of people started. I think there's only one person left that's doing it. You can find them on Etsy, but uh, um, it's not all it's cracked up to be. I was actually doing it to help people, uh, and then other people like, oh, I can do that, and they started doing it, and I noticed that they, they sold some, and then they stopped. So there, there's a lot of issues that you run into if you want to try and mass manufacture it, but um, I, I ran my mouth about that too long, and but that's the reason why I don't make them anymore. I want to show people how to do it and I want to give you different options. I want to let you know that uh, if you can't find the downspout where you live, if you can't find this, I know almost everywhere in the United States you can find that and around the world you call them uh, down pipes instead of down spouts, right? If you need to, um, you can use containers. I've, I've grown in, you know, this is something we're experimenting with that we're going to stack up like the tower garden. We've got the buckets we're growing in. Um, I took one of these, if you'll see it out there, I made it like a little nursery tray with a bunch of little holes in it. That's a little one inch spade bit. Those things cost like $2.32 or something. They're, they're really cheap on Amazon and you can go through and I didn't even measure. I just went through and just drilled a lot of holes. I didn't like space them out exactly right and go through and sand them. It's set. If you can't find a downspout to do that in, you see that, that one like that, my nursery tray, you can always get a shoe box that fits under your bed, the little container that goes under your bed, and you can paint those out if it's not colored, you know, block out the algae, drill several holes on the top, and make that your nursery tray. Um, I've got one, maybe I'll actually cut that one up and, you know, drill some holes in that, or, or we'll do one for you like that. Uh, the little shoe boxes that you have, the, the small ones that one pair of shoes fit into, you can get that, we sold that, we grew in those for years, and you can drill several holes to make that a nursery tray too. So there's options. I want you guys to know that there's bunches of options. That's what we're trying to um, make you see is that this is off-grid. Hydroponics is easy. It's putting nutrients into your container, anything that'll hold water. Drill some holes, put your plants in there. Basically, that's it. Uh, there's a little nuances. We've got a frequently asked questions playlist 
We'll answer most of your questions, but if you can't find the downspout, some people are going to see this. I used to sell a lot of these and all of the mistakes are on my table. I don't like throwing things away, so I'm still going to show people because this is where I start my plants. And I take these plants and I move them into the tower garden and that's part of the system. So when I have these in the tower garden, they're growing. I want something so that when we harvest it, I don't want to wait six more weeks to grow something, right? So when I harvest this, I want to come over to the downspout and say, all right, these guys are ready to go and I'll be able to pull these guys out, stick them into the tower garden. And all at the same time, we've got microgreens growing. So when we pull these out, put them in the tower garden, clean these out, we pull our microgreens out, put them in here over and over and over again. So that's part of that continuous harvest system. If you guys are really confused about anything, I've got a little online course. The link will be down below. You don't have to watch 100 videos. i got 12 videos, kind of explains it all. Plus, we're getting more uh, filmed right now that we're going to put in there. There's lots more coming. Everyone that's over there in the group right now, there's like, I don't know, about 1,500 people or something. Um, we got more coming for you all. I try to put a lot in there so that you get more value. You know, I, I, I want people to think like they paid this much, but they're getting this much value. So we're going to be giving you more and more once you're in there, your lifetime member. And if anything ever happens to these platforms, we can always get together over there. Okay. So I hope that explains everything about the downspout itself. This is an excellent thing to grow in. I use it. You guys can see it's, it's easy to grow a table full, full of food. You can put these on ladder systems going up your house. You can put them on your porch on the handrail. They're versatile. When it comes time to move them, you can pick them up. If you need to take them inside, we had a storm. We had a hurricane coming through. We actually took ours, dumped the nutrients out, put them all in the house, fill them back up with nutrients rode out the hurricane and then you know when siding was off the the house and shingles were off and, and trees were down within a couple hours we took our plants and put them back outside and refilled them and we're back in business so our garden survived through the hurricane because we were able to pick it up and move it a traditional garden is not portable you know you, you're just at the mercy of the weather right so there's there's loads and loads of reasons why you need to grow in something like this but like i said don't get so stress out if you can't find the three by four downspouts. I started in the two by threes. I also started in these down pipes, the, these four inch sewer pipes. They're just about anything you can find, you can you can grow in. Okay, got a lot more videos coming out. I know you guys have questions. There's a lot of you that are new. Uh, we had 300, like I said, 300,000, 400, so 700,000. That's almost a million new unique viewers that have seen this stuff. So so lots of new people. Uh, don't stress out if you don't know all the answers yet. We've got a lot of videos. We've got a lot of uh, frequently asked questions and, and there's a lot of people that will help you out too. So the important thing is that you have fun. Go out, get started, start with greens. Everybody wants to start with a tomato or potatoes or strawberries and all this other stuff. Start with greens. This is the easy thing. It's going to make you have fun. You're going to learn a system where you keep it going over and over again. And once you have this and then you can add other things in there, you don't want to spend all your time like six, seven, eight months to grow a tomato and you mess up and do something and all of a sudden all your time's wasted. You know, you waste a couple of weeks here, you've got some more microgreens coming and then you plant them over here and you've got some more ready to harvest and, and you keep the system going. You're going to have fun with this. It's going to be great. It's going to save you money. You're not going to have to buy basil. You're not going to have to buy kale, mint, you know, all these leafy greens and that. You're just going to have them out there whenever you need it. You go out and harvest it. You'll have so much that you can just pick off of here and just, just keep trimming that because you, you'll have more than you can grow, you can eat. So excellent little system. I love it. I love all of you for, you know, taking the time to, to watch these videos, to learn. All of you that shared, oh my God, I, I just saw the shares and it just blew me away. Like one video that we had had thousands of people like shared it. Um, that's how we're going to get everybody around the world learning how to grow their own food. It's uh, like I said, if you take one person and they share with two people, then it's four people, then it's eight, then it's 16. Uh, just as long as we get the word out there, they don't have to come watch this channel. Once you learn how to do all this, you teach someone else and then they can teach someone else. And we'll get everybody out there. Like we said, we can't feed the world, but maybe we can teach the world how to feed itself. All right, you guys get out there and live to inspire. Keep on growing. Be the change. We'll catch you next time.